far off were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Amen. The first, the first step of, of faith, amen, would have been seeing them afar off. Amen. Looking in the distance and seeing what God had promised them. And then the Bible said that they were persuaded of them. And the third step that they said is they embraced them. And then they made the confession that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And, uh, and then he said in verse number 16, they desire a better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And so he says, the thing that... Uh, the thing that I get is whenever he's whenever he's saying, he said they saw it, then they were persuaded, and then they embraced, and whenever they made the confession, I'm just a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth, then God said, I'm getting ready to prepare a place for you. Amen. And uh, but I would, what I'd like to speak on tonight is uh, this subject, embracing, embracing the promise. Embracing the promise. Amen. I, uh, uh, whenever I was growing up, I guess, and, I, and I'm still not too much of a hug type of an individual. I just, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I was telling my wife today, there was a lady that came into the job that had lost her husband a, a little while back, and she came in and she said, uh, uh, I had done her, her wife, her her husband's funeral and she said I need a hug and I looked at her and she said what's the matter and I said I'm sorry I reserved mine for my wife <laughs> uh, I, I give them to mom and dad and I give them to my daughter and I give them to my wife but that's about the extent of it if there's grandkids come along I'm sure that they're going to get them and Errol and the little guys will get them but uh, I'm not that much of a, uh, of a huggy individual you understand what I'm saying Amen. But uh, there is uh, this thing called a hug, and uh, him, or an embrace, if you want to call it that. Amen. Just a step beyond that, uh, th what a hug is. Uh, and uh, and I and I thought about this embracing the promise, hugging the promise. I wondered how much power there was in a hug, and I looked it up, and I couldn't find anything on the internet that would give me the most powerful stronghold, but it seemed to me like if you were wanting to get a hold of somebody, about the only thing that you could do if you didn't want them hitting you and you wanted to be have the upper hand, the best, the best result would be to put them in a bear hug, and uh, that way uh, they were saying that if a person were to hug someone tight enough that it eventually would uh, mess up their back and do all kinds of real wild stuff. And so that was the first thing that uh, came whenever it says a bear hug. And uh, it was just, that's where the term, uh, actually the term bear hug started from what they can say in, in, in uh, one of the sites on, on the deal it came from a wrestling match that two, that a man did against a 600 pound bear and the bear gave him a hug, and uh, and I don't think I'd have wanted to be in his grasp, but uh, but that's where that term was supposedly originated. I don't know if that's fact or fiction. I did see a picture of that uh, of that fight, and sure enough, that bear was hugging that uh, man. But I don't think it was the type of hug that we're talking about here tonight. Amen. And uh, but but the hug that I'd be talking about. Amen. Would be found in Genesis chapter number two. The first time that I can find a mention of a hug, and perhaps a different little bit of a light, but uh, it's after it's after God has taken the rib out of Adam and He has formed Eve, and and the statement is made in verse number twenty-four. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. It's kind of an interesting passage of scripture whenever we read it because it's mentioned a couple of times in the Gospels. Again, it's this, it's this 
uh, and, and one or two times in the Old Testament, this, this setting that says a man's going to leave his father and mother, but it's not just that. It is cleaving unto his wife, and they uh, shall be one flesh. I don't recall the first hug that I gave my wife. I remember the uh, first time I held her hand, and, and uh, I, I don't recall the first hug, but uh, after a while it just, just became a natural amen. And uh, if Brother Foss would have asked for a confession, uh, have you hugged your wife before uh, this marriage ceremony? Uh, it would not have been a good confession because uh, the truth of the matter was is that uh, I'd hugged her a, quite a few times and uh, and uh, you know uh, it, it was a, it was a pretty good feeling and that was one of the reasons that I felt like it'd be a good it'd be a good thing to go ahead and get married so we could go ahead and have a few more hugs and uh, and uh, you know the only reason to get you know and now Larissa's going to get all uh, you know, just woofed up, but, uh, but it's the truth. Anyhow, amen. As a matter of fact, uh, whenever I thought about it, to, as, as the Lord was dealing with me, I thought of all the weddings. Now, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but of all the weddings that I have either attended or, or uh, been involved in, uh, I have never seen anybody, when the preacher said, you may now kiss the bride, I have never seen the bride and groom at that point put their hand behind their back and go. I, I, I've never seen it. Matter of fact, I think that uh, I think that if that happens, everybody in the congregation would probably bust a gut laughing because they've never seen it either. Because the immediate response of someone getting married is the arms go around and then the kiss. It's that step that says, I'm leaving the father and mother and we're going to become one flesh. There's, there's, a, there's something that happens with the, with the embrace or the, or the cleaving, amen, it, it's not only is an embrace, but the Bible said it becomes, or they become, one flesh. It's a unity together, and uh, and so so I I thought of that, and then as I thought that, then I thought uh, of the scripture in Hebrews that we just uh, that we just read, for it said, "Amen." They saw them afar off; they were persuaded by them. And then they embraced them. It was that embrace that caused them the promise and the individual to become one flesh. It, the longer, perhaps the first time that they heard the promise and they believed the promise, it was a quick hug. But then as they began to be convinced that this is the way, suddenly... Amen. The promise, amen, was not just something that they, that they felt might happen, but they, it came to a point in their lives where they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, amen, that what I, what I have come in contact with, I will embrace, and it has become a part of my second nature. Amen. And... Uh, all three couples that are here tonight, you can attest to the fact that perhaps when we first got married, we may have had a lot of differences of, of opinions and a lot of differences of views and likes and dislikes, but the longer that, that a person is married, suddenly, amen, you see the one, you see the other. And there's things that just all of a sudden they... Uh, they start, why? Because there is this embrace and there is this becoming one flesh. It's, it's that type of a mentality that you find in the New Testament where, where the disciples, they, they are fishing and Jesus said, follow me and I will make you to be a fisher of men. They saw, the, saw from a distance what God wanted to do 
And they were persuaded that he could do that, and so they left to follow him. But somewhere along the line, it became more than a persuasion. It became a embrace, and they began to embrace, amen, the thought that they would become a fisher of men. It was into that setting that you hear Jesus looking at those that had left from following him, and he looks at his 12, and he says, will you also go away, amen? And, uh, and the disciples said, it's become a part of my nature. I can never let go now. I've come too far. You alone have the words of eternal life. Amen. There's something that has happened. If you would have told me when I first, amen, left my nets, would you like to go? Perhaps after I'd made that, that before I had embraced it, perhaps I could have gone back. But now, amen, my whole life has suddenly transformed. I've left the boat and the nets behind, and there's something that I've embraced, and I can't get away, amen, from the promise that is yet to come to me. Amen. It's mine, and I don't know how, amen, how I ever came to the point that I've fallen in love with it, but I know that I have embraced this promise, and it is my promise. Amen. It was in the book of Genesis, chapter number 32, that you read the story, amen, of Jacob after he sent everybody else away. And the Bible said in verse number 24, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Amen. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, the angel said, let me go for the day breaketh. Amen. And he and Jacob said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Amen. And uh, so I pictured Jacob. Amen. Perhaps he was not, amen, the greatest fighter. But he had spent the night, amen, with, uh, with an angel. And uh, God allowed there to be quite the struggle. And the Bible said, amen, that he, that he had a hold of him. It was not a matter of swinging and exchanging punches. But it was a matter of, I've got a hold of something. Or I've embraced something. I believe that there is a promise that I can receive if I can just embrace it. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, you get just a little bit better description of what went on. Amen. In the book of Hosea, chapter number 3. Amen. Or chapter number 12 and verse number 3. Because the scripture said that Jacob took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. In verse number four, amen, of that is, is such a powerful place that you understand the emotion that Jacob had in this wrestling match. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He wept and he made supplication. Somehow, as Jacob, amen, was in that hold of embrace, amen, Jacob said, ah, there's an emotion that's coming into my life. I'm weeping right now, amen. I know that, I, I know that I've got to have a victory and my greatest victory will come to me as I'm travailing and asking God, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I've got to have something from God. It was that embrace, amen, that brought the blessing. It was that embrace that changed his name. It was that embrace, amen, that changed 
his name that day, amen, and, let, and caused him to walk differently. What happened, amen, as he sent everybody ahead, Jacob was afraid, but as he looked at that angel and saw him, he realized, amen, from afar off, I am persuaded that tonight will be a night, amen, for victory. Tonight will be my night, hallelujah, to get an answer from the throne. I don't know exactly what I've got to do, but I've, 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 I've decided that I will embrace with all of my strength, hallelujah, anything that has the look of promise upon it, I've decided to embrace it because I know that tonight is the night that God has for me. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, and so we find that there was a change in his life. It was Naomi, amen, and Elimelech that had went to that foreign country with their two sons. And now, amen, Naomi has lost her husband. Ruth and Orpah have lost their husbands. And uh, Naomi said, it's time for me to go back home. Orpah said, I think that I'll stay here. And Ruth said, amen, the scripture said in verse number 14, they both lifted up their voice and wept again. Ru Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Amen. There was something that Ruth said. Amen. Ruth said, it's not just a kiss with me, a kiss of goodbye, but rather what I have come for. I am, I am to a point in my life that I've seen the blessing of God, amen, and the things of God upon your life. And I'm willing to leave my life behind to embrace the promises that you have within your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Naomi said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, amen, unto her gods, amen. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. She said to her, she said, go back to your people. Go back to your gods. Amen. But Ruth said, don't entreat me to leave thee, nor return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. Where you lodge, that's where I will lodge. Your people will become my people. I have embraced Amen. The fact I'm making a change. I'm making a commitment. I have embraced the fact that God is with you. And your God will be my God. Hallelujah. You said go back to your people and go back to your gods. But Ruth said, not on your life. I've made a commitment, hallelujah, that you and your people's going to become my people. I've embraced them, and your God will be my God. It was that embrace that brought the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. It was Boaz that said, Amen. The blessing of God is upon you under whose wings that you have chosen to dwell under. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Why are you here, Ruth? Because I have embraced something. Amen. And it's become a part of my second nature. I can't let it go. I can't turn it around. Hallelujah. Amen. It has become one with me. Amen. I could never go back to my people again. I can never go back, amen, to the old gods that I had in the past. I've had an embrace, and I will not let go of what I have right now. I've been persuaded by it, and I believe that God, amen, has something great yet in store for me. Hallelujah. The story of Elijah and Elisha is very familiar to us. But just to rehearse just for a moment, Amen. Elijah left that cave experience where God has spoke to him. 
and said, I have 7,000 prophets that have not bowed their knee to Baal. And, and God said, go to Elisha, and I want you to, uh, I want him to be the one that follows you and be your servant. So he departed thence, verse 19 of uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, he with the 12. Elijah passed by him. And he said, and he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back, for what I have I done to thee? Amen. And Elisha didn't say, Well, if you're so hard-hearted, I guess that I'm going to just go ahead and, and, and forget about what I, what, what's going on. No, he, he stopped just for a moment. Somehow he must have saw in the distance, and he, say, he saw the promise afar off. Amen. And he was persuaded enough of it, amen, that he took a yoke of oxen and slew them, boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen. He burned, amen, the plow that he had, and he gave unto the people, and they did eat. And then he rose up, and he went after Elijah, and he ministered unto him. You know what he did? He said, I'm going to embrace the promise. Yes. I'm going to hang on to it. Amen. And so whenever we read in chapter number 2 of 2 Kings, it should not be something that, that comes as a, I wonder why he's doing this. Amen. Because for the last however many years, Elisha, amen, has already been embracing. It's become a part of his second nature. It's become one with his flesh. Yes. The only thing that I desire is, this, is a double portion of the Spirit of God. The only thing that I desire is the will of God within my life. I just need God to do something. And he embraced that. He just kept on holding on to it. Amen. It just became a part of a second nature with him. Amen. It was a promise that he had embraced. Amen. And, and, and as I, I thought about that, you know, there's three different times that Elijah tells him, why don't you tarry here? And Elisha says, I beg your pardon. No, we're not leaving you. No, we're not leaving you. No, we're not leaving you. Why are you saying that, Elisha? Because, now, if he'd have told me that I could stay with my plow, amen, when he first put the mantle on, it might have been easy for me to say, well, I don't know why he put the mantle on me at the beginning. I'm confused by what happened to me. But I've been living with this promise, amen, for a length of time now. You didn't tell me the day that we left, amen, my old place, that this was a temporary fix. You let me come to the place where that promise would become one, amen, with me. And because that promise has become one, amen, I've made up in my mind, hallelujah, there's no turning back. There's no turning around. There's no stopping along the way, amen. Why? Because I've embraced the promise. Hallelujah. I've embraced the things of God. Amen. And Elijah, or Elijah asked him when they crossed the Jordan. Now I'd like to ask you. You've been faithful all these years. What is it that you want from me? I'd like a double portion of your spirit. Amen. And Elijah said, Amen, you've asked something hard, but if you'll continue to embrace it, that it way. You, if you'll continue to make it your second nature, if you'll continue to live, Amen, with that thought in mind, he made me a promise. He made me a promise. He made me a promise. Hallelujah. Amen. That promise will be a fulfillment. Amen. I don't know exactly Amen. Uh, uh, the, the way that it happened, except that I know that the mantle fell to the ground. Amen. And I know that Elisha, amen, took the mantle that had been upon his shoulders and he ripped it in twain and threw it aside. And he grabbed the mantle of Elijah. Amen. And he walked back to the river and he said, Where is the God of Elijah? Hallelujah. What was he saying? He was saying, Is the promise fulfilled? Is the thing that I've been 
embracing for so long? Is it going to finally come to fruition? And oh my, did it ever. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It started, however, not in 2 Kings chapter number 2, but it started a long time before when that mantle first fell upon him. Hallelujah. The book of Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 35. The Apostle Paul, amen, speaks these words and he said, For who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And as, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all uh, the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And then he makes his statement, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You know what he was saying? He said... Jesus embrace me and and I decided that I would embrace him yeah. hallelujah amen and uh, Jesus showed me his love and I decided to show him my love and because we are we're in love hallelujah amen there is nothing I am persuaded that death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers amen why because I've got a bear hug on Jesus Christ Hallelujah. And it's become one with me. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I, I've embraced the promise of God that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Well, hallelujah. Amen. I've embraced the promise, amen, of God. And I know, amen, the times it might seem like, amen, that the, that the, uh, that the devil would say, amen, well, it's so far out there in the future. It seems to be impossible. Amen. And to him, I'd like to say, you came too late. I've embraced this thing. It's not something that I just saw far off, but I'm persuaded it's going to happen. Hallelujah. And I've embraced it. It's my promise now. Amen. If I don't see it today, that doesn't mean I'm not going to see it. It just means it may not happen today. I've embraced it. It's become a part of my flesh. It's become a part of my life. And I know that what God promises, He will fulfill because it, it starts out with a view from the future. Amen. Way down, way down there. It becomes a part of the persuasion. And then it becomes a part of the embrace. The Apostle Paul, amen, speaks in, this, in these terms in Philippians chapter 3 and verse number one, verse number 12. Not as though I have already attained. Either we're already perfect. But I follow after. If that I may apprehend. That for which I am also apprehended. Of Christ. Hallelujah. He said. He embraced me. And he caught me. And whenever he embraced me. He wanted me to be one with him. And now. And I'm trying my best to apprehend him. I just want to get as close and be wrapped up in him. Hallelujah. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, I've just made up in my mind, I'm going to embrace the promise of God. I'm going to embrace, embrace the things of God. I really want to know Him in the power of His resurrection and in the fellowship of His suffering. Amen. What are you saying, Paul? I'm saying that this embrace is going to make me one with Him. Oh, I know that I've suffered some things. I know that I've went through some things. I've had some victories. But I still have not yet attained. I still haven't become totally one the way that I want to. I've embraced it. 
I'm continuing to embrace because I know that if I will embrace long enough, it will become one. It will become one. Hallelujah. 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 It's one body that he has. It's one spirit that he has. Hallelujah. It's one church that he has. So how do I know I'm a part of the church? It's because I've embraced him. And when I've embraced him, hallelujah, suddenly everything comes to fulfillment. Amen. Let's love the Lord together tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I praise you, O oh God. I give glory and honor to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.